Man, some of these boys go to sleep. You supposed to let me know when we record. <laughs> Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come in here and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that we, it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works. Let's Yeah. But That's right. unless anyone should boast or why y'all skipping words and giving freely as a gift to all who obey him so we skip something mm -mm. backwards in this state oh Wrong. You should expect no good thing from the most high. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. That you may have in the day of judgment. With that said. Is repent that they might live. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The honor of my young boy. In yeah, the that mortal words is a Kai Harris. Yeah, you know I mean, the honor of my young boy. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be the young monster. you going to have to move out there, bro, so we can keep this going. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Figure something out. I don't know about that. Listen. My boy is trying to read up, not read. What was he doing? He's trying to remember all his words and spell them. He couldn't get them. I mean, what was it? What was y'all doing? What was, was y'all doing? Something. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, so he had to he had to spell all the words in a minute. You know what I'm saying? He had to read all the words, the tight words. I thought you had to spell them. He was sounding them out. Oh, so he was reading. Was it guy? Yeah. yeah. So he had to read all the words and do the do all the sight words in a um in a minute. It's all, you know what I'm saying? Baby would time him, stop him. That boy get frustrated. <laughs> you see him trying to hold it in. He's like, yeah, scratch his ear. Yeah. I'm like, that's what it take. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a different level of passion that you got. I ain't got that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got that. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, oh, it's all right. It'll, it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? But when you got that passion for something, like you want to be good at something, you got passion, that's what it take. That's what it takes. That's what the what? You ain't got no darn passion, boy. You, you dispassionate like that. Barely me. got passion in basketball. I see your butt on the court. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, you got you got whatever little play God got. It's all right though, you know what I'm saying? I teach you how to work with it, you know what I'm saying? That boy ain't got no passion, no enthusiasm. I ain't never once I ain't never once say you hear you say darn it after you did a drill wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't never, I ain't never want to see him get down about it. I'm like, son, I'm oh, a, I'm a, I'm like, so hard. we practice, I'm a, we practice this for like three times straight. You still can't do it. He, you know what he do? I want to do it. He's like, he's shoulders. Like, boy, got no. Oh problem. well, but that's what it take, man. That's what it take. I was gonna be the boy. You know what I'm saying? Mommy, I'll do that drill once, get it over with. What's next? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about last week, man? Do that, do that drill and get that one over with. How much is that? How much is crazy? I just need a kick start. And then <laughs> 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 we're laughing too hard. Over I'm trying to figure out how you get back over here. I thought you were my reader. I you better go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, get up. Your butt fall asleep every time. I don't even want you comfortable. You know, we know, we know what happened when we fell asleep in church when I was little. My, my mom's a poppy. Oh, so, sometimes she let him get away with it, but more times than not, yeah, wake up. Yeah. I thought that was a wet willy. Wet willy? I wish it was a wet willy. Boy, my mom. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> uh, nobody? Just kick started. Yeah, kick started. I can't remember. I fell asleep. Okay, I got y'all. I ain't worried about it. I got y'all. Let me see here. Do you have notes? Do I have notes? 
wrong with you? you All right. <clears throat> We're going to put it on the screen. You don't have any notes. We're going to put it on the screen for y'all. That's your Kickstarter. We got kings up here, right? Which king was we talking about? Were we talking about last week, Rehoboam? No. Nope. Jeroboam. Were we talking about Jeroboam last week? What did we say? Okay. <laughs> was we talking about Abijah last week? Yes. What did we talk about with Abijah? What did he do? We talked a little bit about Abijah. It didn't really, it didn't really touch on what he did too much, though. Abijah, he got in trouble by the Most High God because he was disobeying the commandments. But mm -hmm. then he humbled himself and started obeying the commandments. But the punishment was that the king of Egypt was ruling over them. So he took all of the stuff Solomon had stored up, all of that good stuff Solomon had saved. King of, the king of Egypt came and took that stuff away. Okay. Did we talk about Asa? No, nah, we didn't get into Asa. We did talk about Asa. Uh -huh. <laughs> we said he was the next king, but we didn't get into it. We stopped, we stopped there. We was going to read Asa. Give me 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 1. It's 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 1. That's where we left off, right? No, nah, we left 2 Chronicles 15. Oh, 2 Chronicles 15, my yeah. fault. Give me 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. Yahuwah is with you while you be with him. Right. And if you so, seek him. So you remember we got, we got here with Asa. Right? This is in the middle of Asa's story. Right? So you remember Asa came and y'all y'all remember what Asa did? So you remember Abijah? Abijah messed some stuff up. He had, you know, he had the people worshiping other idols, the high places, all that. But Asa come, y'all remember that Asa came and tried to clean stuff up a little bit? He did. He removed somebody. He didn't like the queen or something like that? Yeah. He got ready. He, he tried to clean this stuff up a little bit. Right? So that's what we that's what we looked at. Asa, we is looking at we is looking at all the different kings. You know what I'm saying? So let me put it on the screen so y'all can see. We was looking at all the different kings, especially the kings that came from uh came from uh David, mm -hmm. right? Ethiopia. So you have David, then it goes down to Solomon next, right? So it goes down to Solomon, then it goes down to Jeroboam. But remember the kingdom was split, the ten tribes. It was split, so it goes over here to Jeroboam also. So the ten tribes are over here. I know my ten look all messed up. That ten look over here. And then the others go to Rehoboam. So you remember what ended up staying with Rehoboam? Who remember? What stayed with Rehoboam? Mm-hmm. Let's Judah see if we can go and, to it. Judah and Benjamin. Right? So we have the northern tribes was Ephraim, Reuben, Simeon, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Asher, Gad, Naphtali, and Manasseh. Right? Those were the northern tribes. Then you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who ended up staying on the southern tribes. Right? So this is kind of how I looked on the map. This is the northern tribes on the map right here. Right? And this is the southern tribes down here. Right? So what we were looking at here is after that, Rehoboam didn't do what he was supposed to do. He didn't follow after the steps of David. Abijah didn't follow after the steps of David. And then you get Asa. And we talked about the Most High God having the prophecy that he'll visit the iniquity of the children unto which generations? Third and fourth. The, excuse me. The third and the fourth generation. So if you look at it and you do your little count, right? With the count, you're going to see that Solomon, right? So you got David, right? David, generation one. Solomon, generation two, Rehoboam, generation three, Abijah, generation four. And then what do you know? Asa come and he tried to clean it up. So because of the sin that David made, he got to deal with three additional generations. That would take him to the fourth generation. Right? So until the fourth generation, when that fourth generation come, it's like, all right, you good. And we're going to look at that pattern throughout the, uh, throughout, how about the New Testament, throughout the, uh, throughout the history of our kings. We're going to look at that pattern, how you will see a sin that's visited. And what that means, visited, is the consequences 
Somebody shut the kids up for me. The consequences that come with sin, the kids get touched by those consequences. It's the stuff that we kind of call colloquially today, you know what I'm saying, generational uh, Curse. curses. Or some people might call it like karma or something like that. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? But generally, our people, we would call it like generational yeah. curses. It's stuff that, that my parents did or my grandparents did that we still deal with today. Right? Some people are like, oh, yeah, gambling is a generational curse. Because it's like, oh, yeah, your granddaddy gambled like that. And you just got that. That's the type of stuff that gets passed down. You got to deal with that. It don't mean that the kid is automatically a sinner. It just means that they're going to have temptations that maybe they would not have had to deal with had their parents cleaned it up. The reason why the Most High God give us this, this is something that I always try to drill into our heads. Y'all young right now, a lot of y'all, right? A lot of y'all watching in is old. You know what I'm talking about? But you know, all together, we look at it, our kids are going to have to deal with the impacts of what we do. So if you think smart now, I was just talking to Mel earlier in the car, right? It's the decisions that we make young that set the path for the for our for the rest of our life right and i'm not talking about career that, that's true for the career too but i ain't talking about oh if you work hard in school and you go to college and you make the a b honor roll and you know what you might just be something when you grow up you know what I'm saying? that's true too that is that's true too it give you opportunities at least you know what i'm saying you do good in school now you got options over here options over here options over here Right, you do good in school, you got a scholarship to college. You don't do in school, do good in school, you can still go to college, but you don't have that scholarship. Right? So now I gotta pay for I gotta pay for school out of my own pocket. Or I gotta take out a loan to pay for school. Well, that's different. If I got a scholarship, guess what? Not only do I get a prestigious uh, a prestigious uh, education, but I didn't have to pay out of pocket for it. That's an advantage. That's a different level of opportunity, right? So doing well in school or making good choices, period, opens up opportunity. And it's the same spiritually. Right. Remember, you remember when we don't have to go back and get it. But remember when David sinned in the matter of Uriah. Right. Remember when David. Y'all, y'all remember David was on that rooftop. He looked down. What did he see? Who remember what he saw? It didn't say naked. Wait, what, why is that in your head? But she was taking a bath. So she might have been naked. So it's just assumption, dad. <laughs> but he right, though. Scrub. But yeah, he saw a naked woman. He's sitting there looking over there. Don't you be thinking about that. You looking over there, he's looking at you like, I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I like that. Then he sent the young boy. Y'all remember he sent the young boy to go get her. She came up there. She probably was none the wiser why she had came up there. And he did put a little bit of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Put a little bit of that game on her, you know what I'm saying? No, you know what I'm saying? No, I didn't want a whole bunch of wars. You know what I'm talking about? This is what I do. This one right here, you know what I'm saying? That's a. Philistine skull. You know what I'm saying? He probably showed all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? No, I cracked that you know, boy. He's probably a barbarian warrior. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? No manners, just like. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That boy probably buff, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, now you know what I'm doing. Oh, no, no, no. I always take off my shirt before I go into, you know what I'm saying, this room. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? She probably looking like, wow, look at our key. Because he the key. You got to think of him like, who the biggest celebrity? Drake. Drake. Who is Mr. B? He's a YouTuber that's rich, but nowhere near. So what y'all say, Drake? Drake? Drake. Lil Baby? He said Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne? Lil Lil Wayne. The Baby. Lil Wayne? Lil Baby. Mikey. Mikey. Who is that? I never, he can't be the most famous. I ain't never even heard of Mikey. I ain't talking about none of you now. Y'all don't even know what famous people. Let go with, let go with Drake. We ain't doing Bruno Mars. Let go with Drake, right? So you got Drake. It's like Drake. Even if you, like, even if a person, like, who don't listen to Drake music? Not like that. Right? She don't look, he don't look, but guess what? If he see Drake right now, he gonna be, ah! <laughs> Y'all ain't never see him? Definitely not. Oh. I'm gonna say, Drake, what up? That's it. You know what I'm That's all he gets. It ain't gonna be no regular. He it ain't gonna be no, he gonna do that. It ain't gonna be no regular enough. It gonna be like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gonna be like, yeah. I'm gonna be like, what up? What up, Drake? You know what I'm saying? What up? You know what I'm saying? I'm really shocked that, I, that he's know, out here, though. I'm you see somebody like, like that, and it's like, you got to try to contain yourself because it's exciting. It's like, dang, what you doing here? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the dude, that's the dude that I love, I love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Trying to keep, what up, Drake? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get all excited. Because that's, so you got to imagine when she see him, it's like, the king? Like, I moved, like, me and Uriah moved into this neighborhood just to be close to the king. Right? And then she see him. He call her up. You know what I'm saying? Come on up here. He ended up laying with the lady. Right? Sleeping with the lady. Then after that, ended up getting her pregnant. When he gets her pregnant, he know that he ain't supposed to because that's not his wife. That's somebody else's wife. He ends up, long story short, having the man killed, who was his soldier, fighting in his war. He purposely put him on the fight line though he died. Most High God didn't like that. That was evil. Most High God didn't like that. Right? So Most High God said to David, when he judged him for that, he said, no, I'll pardon your stuff. But let me tell you something. I gave you this wife and that wife. I gave you all these riches. I gave you this kingdom. I gave you all these things. And guess what else he said to him? I would have given you more. And I would have given you more. That's the thing that we all got to think about. Each time that we commit a sin, each time that we make a mistake, each time that we just are foolish and we don't think about our options, we're not thinking ahead, we're not thinking about what God wants from us. Each time that that goes awry, each time that goes to the side, the most high God is saying, I would have given you more. Because one day you're going to look back at your life and you're going to be like, you know what? I didn't been through some things, but you know what? People are doing worse in the world than I am. You're going to say some stupid stuff like that to comfort yourself. Right? But then you got to think about it. But I would have given you more. Right? Constantly, this world is going to try to get you to think about getting more and having more. But it's different when the God, when the most high God give you more from what the stuff that they have you chase. They're just going to have you constantly chasing money and tell you, oh, no, you need to work for yourself. You got to be a business owner. You need to work for yourself. You ain't got to, you know what I'm saying? Don't let the white man tell you. You know what I mean? Because that's what's been drilled in our brain. Right? That's fine to work for yourself. Our people come from working for ourselves. That's, that was the way to do it, right? Ain't nothing wrong with working for yourself. But you got to ask yourself, why do you want to work for yourself? Right? You want to work for yourself because you, you, you have the qualifications, you that responsible, you want to take care of other people. Or you just want to work for yourself because you don't want to have anybody be your boss. If it's the latter, you're going to find yourself in a rude awakening. Right? Because you're going to find that everybody is your boss when you work for yourself. Yeah, that's a fact. When you work for yourself, everybody is your boss. Or you no longer have a job for yourself. As a customer, you're going to have to do whatever. you have to do whatever. Whatever they demand. And guess what? You're going to get a whole bunch of customers like, well, I'm going to just do what these demand. And one day, because you're so loose, them customers are going to leave you too. Because everything is principle-based. You know what I'm saying? You got to have principles. All right? So we look at it, and we know that that sin impacts our children. We also know that sin will prevent opportunities for us. So the Most High God is telling us these things to encourage us to be thoughtful about the things that we do. It's a sin to be foolish. And be foolish is just saying, mm, I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to do something. That's foolish. That's a sin. To be, that in itself is a sin, the books say. Right? We have to be thoughtful about the stuff that we do. We got to think about it and say, hmm. Why am I doing this, right, internally? Why do I want to do this? And does it align with what the Most High God say, right? Does it go against what the Most High God say? If it don't go against what the Most High God say, don't even spend too much time. Listen, if, if what I'm doing don't break the law and don't break the commandments, guess what? I'm not spending too much time thinking about it. My mama, one thing my mama always said to me, and there ain't nothing wrong with this, this what she said. One thing my mama always said to me, oh, son, just pray about it. But let me tell you the truth. If what I'm doing don't go against the law, you know what I'm talking about? I ain't spend a whole bunch of time. I'm going to pray, but I'm not praying about no specific situation that don't go against the law. They don't make no sense. I'm going to pray about something that like, oh, I need you to heal my sister. Right? Give my mom good health. I'm not praying about you. I'm saying, well, Lord, I just, I just need to know, should I buy the new Kia Carnival or should I keep the 2023? <laughs> I don't want to play, pray about that for. Right? Most I got to leave you two, whatever one you want, boy. You know what I'm saying? What you, 
Do whatever one you want. That's what do. If it don't go against the law, man, do what you do. What you do. Most I got. Most our God gave us that free. That's what when they say you free, but mm -hmm. a Christian might say you free in Christ. That's what it's talking about. Yeah, it's talking about you don't break. If you're not breaking the commandments, do whatever you want to do. Literally, do whatever you want to do as long as you don't go against the commandments. That's freedom, right? But we get we get caught up on so much sin that we start thinking sin is freedom. Yeah. Start even jumping around and chasing after these girls or chasing after these boys. That's freedom, right? Doing drugs, getting high, getting drunk, that's freedom. Stuff ain't darn freedom. Things are trapped. Stuff ain't darn freedom. Yeah, you know some yeah, you know somebody that do drugs? You know somebody that 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 that, that smoke, drink, get drunk, any of that stuff? You know somebody that smoke, drink, get drunk, all that stuff? You know somebody that smoke, drink, get drunk, all that stuff, take drugs, pills, all that stuff, all y'all. Y'all know somebody that do one of those things? Do it look like they free? Look at their life. Do it look like they free or do like, do it seem like they addicted to something? Do it seem like, like I got, matter of fact, if y'all know some people, right? Do it seem like if they don't have it, they, they don't go well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, somebody got to give me it. That's a trap. That's a trap. We laugh about it, but it's, it's, it hurt. It's, it's, it, cause we love these people. That's a trap. It's, that's what happens to us. Now, those are the obvious ones. Let me tell you, the same thing happens with stuff that's not so obvious. The same stuff happens with lying. You get addicted to it. You have to do it. You set so many lies up with yourself, and guess what? I'm stuck here. I gotta keep lying now. My whole life becomes a lie. And then guess what sets in after that? Depression. You know why? Because depression, right? Depression is like a math formula. You know what I'm saying? Y'all in math, right? Y'all see y'all math, they get the formula, you got... X minus Z or what, what letters? A you squared mean? plus like B squared. X minus Y equals, and then they'd give you a product or give you a number. You know what I'm saying? In this case, it'd be a number. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how that's kind of how depression is. It's a it's a formula like that. You fly. right? It's a, <laughs> it's a it's a formula like that. that could be stuff. It's about reality, right? So so the formula for depression is expectation minus reality equals depression when you have expectations when you tell yourself or lie to yourself about what the world should be or how people should treat you or how people should think of you or how you wish it was like this or how you wish it was like that or how you just don't want to accept the life you have and all that stuff when that happens that's your expectations then you got to take away from that expectation reality if that comes out to zero you have zero depression you're good if it comes out to negative, that means you have negative depression. That's good. Oh, but when that thing's a number. You know what I'm talking about? That means that the distance between your reality, what's actually happening in your life, and what you're telling yourself you have to have or should have in your life, is too far apart. And when it gets too far apart, that, that ruins you psychologically. Right? That comes from lies. That comes from lying to yourself. That comes from allowing people to lie to you. Right? That's part of it. You have to make sure that one, people treat you with respect, and you have to make sure that you separate yourself when disrespect is there. And then you have to make sure that you honest with yourself and you accountable to what the word is saying and to, to what's right in your life, period. Keep your word, be honest, and do what you gotta do. You do that, you got sanity. Now I ain't saying that your life would be perfect and nothing that you'll never be sad, this, that, another. You'll always find your way and you'll always have sanity. You won't go crazy. It's a lot of people that turn to drugs, alcohol, and pills, and all these other things because internally they are going crazy. Y'all got a bunch of kids that's y'all age talking about I was born in a different body. That's happening because kids are going crazy. Kids are being lied to, which is separating the distance of reality from their expectations, and then it drives them crazy to the point where it's like, give me medication. Right? This stuff is evil that we deal with in this world. One of the things, one of the things that, that a lot of people today, people are very judgmental, right? A lot of times they put, a lot of times the world puts like judgmental on religious people or on Christians. They'll say Christians are judgmental. 
right? But people in general are very judgmental, right? And so what happens is people will look and they'll read history and they'll look back 100, 200 years and they'll say, oh, those people were so primitive, all right? Or people over in the Middle East, they were so primitive. Because you know what they used to do? They used to mutilate little boys and little girls, right? There's something called a eunuch. You, can, you read about it even in the Bible. And a eunuch is basically somebody who, who's their genitals, right? Their reproductive parts, their little private parts. If you're a male, cut off, right? And that was mutil that's called mutilization. And they did that. They did that to kids. They get, did that to children, right? For whatever reason, either, either out of punishment or out of a vow or something oh, that they thought was sacred, yeah, right? They would do these things and chop the little boys off. Right. Sometimes grown men, they chop them off, too. And then the girls, they would do similar things. Right. They sew the girls all together. Right. And they do little things to girls and, and just make them very, it's very painful and very sick. Right. And so we look back at that and we're very judgmental because we look at it. And we say, that's nasty. Those people, I can't believe people did that stuff to kids. But what happens is the most high God makes a fool out of people because the same thing is happening to our children today. What do you think happens when a when little boy say, you know what, I think I was born in a man's body, but I feel like a girl. So he start dressing like a girl, right? And then people around him say, don't make fun of him. Accept him. Respect his pronouns. It's she. Then he try to, he try to freaking Z that thing. He say, I like to be called Zer. You know what I'm saying? They be saying some weird stuff. I like to be called Zim and Zir. You know what I'm saying? I be looking at this like these people are nuts, right? But that's what happens, right? So now he dressed like a girl. Then he go to his counselor. You know what his counselor tell him? I need to, I need to assign you this medication. Have you ever thought about getting surgery? Okay, great. You have to take this medication first. You know what the medication does? It blocks his hormones. Because this little boy is about to go through puberty. That means his reproductive parts, his little privates, is about to start working differently. It's about to start making himself a man. Right? He's about to start formating himself into a man. For a girl, it's very similar. She starts to, she starts to prepare herself to handle babies, to handle a baby and to have a grow a baby inside of her. Right? So these things are natural. These are the way, this is the way the most high God designed a woman and a, and a, and a man, or a male and a female, right? But the hormone blockers prevents his body from doing that. So what that does to him essentially is mutilates him. It's the same as chopping his little stuff off. In fact, that's what the surgery is. When you get to the surgery part, chop his stuff off. And these are children. It's no different. It's no different from mutilating somebody for your religious belief. You don't think this stuff is religious? When we is in COVID, what did they use to say almost every day on TV? Wear a mask. They definitely said wear a mask. But if somebody said, man, I don't think the mask worked like that. What are they going to tell you? You anti-vax. They going to say, believe the science. Y'all heard them say that? Mm -hmm. Believe the science. It's three words they use. Believe the science. Follow the science. Trust the science. Right? They repeat these things. What does that sound like? Religion. Believe in God. Follow Jesus. Trust God. Right? It's the same concept. What people try to do is they try to present this stuff as if it's not religious. Like, oh, no, that's religious and this is not. No, all of this stuff is religious. All of this stuff is faith. All of it has an equal footing. So now once we put it on equal level... Who religion got the most backing behind it? Scientists change what they do every year. Scientists, the whole idea of science is saying, I don't really know. So you putting your faith in something that says, I don't really know. Cool. That's fine. Book got history behind it and y'all can't prove it wrong. Y'all try, y'all try to lie on it, but y'all can't prove it wrong. And then at the same time, this thing is only telling you good stuff. Can't nobody point to the book and be like, nah, that's messed up. People would just say, the most people would say, that's unnecessary. Now, they say it's messed up. Like, if we, if God said, like, like, 
you know what I'm saying, like get rid of a woman and child, they'll be like, that's messed up. You know what I'm saying? Get rid of like like the, with the Canaanites. You know what I'm saying? They were like, that's messed up. Or like the, the flood. The judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The like judgment. The flood, they are like, okay, that's messed the up. The punishment. Yeah, the punishment. Accountability. They'll say that's messed yeah, up. That's I'm talking about the commandment. Yeah, no. Ain't nobody going to look at, uh, look at the book and say, oh, you know what? That commandment is just, the most you're going to say is it's unnecessary. Like when it comes to, when it comes to mixing clothes, like, you know what I'm saying? You mix, you mix, you mix, uh, you mix, uh, like flax with, uh. Linen. Flax with linen. Or uh, flax with, uh, uh, you mix linen. And wool. Yeah, linen wool. Right? Nobody's gonna look at that and be like, oh, that's so wrong. Right? They just gonna say, that's stupid. It's unnecessary. Why you why would you do that? Why I can't eat pork? That's stupid. It's unnecessary. I don't want to do it. You're not gonna see nobody say, oh no, that's that's just evil. Right? You you doing that, that's immoral. It's wrong. The judgment, they will say that about. Because it's accountability. It's a punishment for doing something that you weren't supposed to do. They will say that about that. They won't say it about the commandment. Right, because that's that's what the most that's how the most the most I got is gonna make the world testify of them, right? But I want y'all to understand this stuff. I want y'all to be able to see it and breathe it and understand it and see the effects of it. the reason you why we read this stuff is because we need to understand the effects of the actions that we take, and we need to think ahead about those effects. We need to think of like, okay, if I do this, how is it gonna play out? And weigh it, see if it makes sense. I want to do it now. It's right here. I know I can get away with it. I know I can do it. But if I do it, how does it play out? And sometimes it's not about getting caught. Sometimes it's just about, matter of fact, sometimes it's more dangerous when you don't get caught because you get addicted to stuff. You start doing it and doing it and you get trapped. And that's what sin is. It's making it to where you ever heard somebody say it's impossible to stop sinning? That, they say that because it's so difficult to get out of something once, you, once you're addicted to it. Or once you developed a routine or once you painted yourself in a corner, you got to keep lying and tricking and, and, and selling yourself out just to stay in the place that you want to be. Right. It's a slippery slope. We have an opportunity, especially at y'all age, have an opportunity to dodge that stuff. And some of our old, older folks listening in, you know what I'm saying? We just got to, you know what I'm saying? We just got to deal what we got, y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just got to deal what we got and not mess it up no more. Yeah. So, all right, you supposed to be reading my stuff. You know what I'm saying? What we got? Who is that? Uh, that brother Daoud, you know what I'm saying? What he say? Shabbat Shalom. Oh, you can't even read that type of stuff, huh? All right. Um, you got a blanket for it, man. Let me get uh, let me get First Kings chapter fourteen, verse twenty. What's going on in our blanket? This First Kings chapter fourteen, verse twenty. We are gonna try to talk about some of these kings. Ah, right, this whole time I had it on the screen. Y'all looking at all the kings while I'm running my mouth. This first Kings chapter 14, verse 20. You know what I mean? In the days which Jeroboam reigned were two and twenty years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab, his son, reigned in his stead. All right, so that's Jeroboam, and that's his son. So if you look at this chart, when you look at this one, let me get rid of my ugly little markings here. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at this chart, it, uh, you're going to see that, let me see, get my laser pointer. So you're going to see that Jeroboam right here has a son, Nadab, right? So this little, this little burgundy or whatever it is, brown little bar that goes from one name to the next, that means that that's a child. That's like direct lineage. You know what I'm saying? And then when you see these yellow arrows kind of go to the side, that means that this person is not related, but the kingdom passed over to that person. So as you can see, we are about to read about the kingdom passing over to a whole bunch of different families on the northern kingdom side. This, le this right side here is the northern kingdoms. Right. So we're going to see how stuff get passed over. So remember, if y'all remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about Jeroboam and Jeroboam had a prophecy against him. The prophecy that was against Jeroboam was that none of his, his people, right, would be left. Most I got is someday it's going to kill Jeroboam. I mean, kill uh, all the children of Jeroboam and none of them would be left. He going to kill them all. So Jeroboam 
son, Nadab, is about to take the throne. And he's not going to have nobody to pass the throne to because the prophecy said everybody got to die. So let's see if we can pick up when we read it. This first Kings chapter 14, verse 20. Watch the book, sir. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The city which the Lord did choose out of the tribes of Israel, Israel to put his name there, and his mother's name was Naamah mm -hmm. and Ammonitus. And Judah did evil in the sight of Yahuwah, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they had committed, mm -hmm. above all that their fathers had done. Mm -hmm. But they also built themselves high places and Im in images and groves on every high hill and over every green tree. Mm -hmm. And there were also Sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he took away the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house. He even took away all. He, and he took away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. Mm -hmm. And King Rehoboam made in their stead brazen shields and committed them unto the hands of the chief of the guard, which kept the door of the king's house. Mm -hmm. And it was so when the king went into the house of the Lord that the guard bare them and brought them back into the guard chamber. Now, the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Mm -hmm. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his father in the city of David. And his mother's name was Naamah and Ammonitus. And Abijam, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. Keep going. That's 15. Yeah. Now the, now, the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam over Judah. Mm -hmm. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Abishalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord did, David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem. Okay. You guys, stop fighting. Go play. Where you go, boy? Go play. Stop fighting. Go play. And give a... Uh, nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord God give his lamp, give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set his son up after him and to establish Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Mm -hmm. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? All right. So now we have Abijam again. I just want to go through some of this stuff again so we can make sure we didn't miss nothing. Watch this. And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Mm -hmm. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. And in the twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. In forty-one years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land, and removed all the idols that his father had made. Mm -hmm. And well, also, Maacah, his mother... Even her, he removed from oh, being queen up. because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it in the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. Mm -hmm. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated and the things which himself had dedicated unto the house of the Lord. Silver and gold and vessels. And there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. And Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might not suffer any to go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Mm -hmm. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold that were left in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house and delivered them into the hand of his servants. And King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tebrimon, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, that dwelt in Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and you. And between my father and your father, behold, I have sent unto you a present of silver and gold. Come and break your league with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So Ben-Hadad listened unto King Asa, and he sent the captains of the host which he had against the cities of Israel, and smote Ion, Ion and Dan, and Abel-Beth-Maacah, and all Sinaroth, 
with all the land of Naphtali. And it came to pass when Baasha heard thereof that he left off building Ramah and dwelt in Tizra, Tirza. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout all Judah, none was exempted. And they took away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof where Baasha had built it. And King Asa built with them Geba and Benjamin and Mizpah. The rest of all the acts of Asa and all his might and all that he did, in the cities which he built, are they not written in the book? Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Nevertheless, in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet. He was and, diseased in his feet. The book say, "All right, watch this." And Asa slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began so now, to reign over Israel. So now you'll see that the book is it prioritized the kings of Judah so far, right? So we got to talking about the kings of Judah. I want y'all to understand the timeline because if you're reading it, it might get confusing. So we just talked about the king Baasha here, right? So Baasha comes after Nadab. If y'all remember when we first started in verse uh, in chapter 14, verse 20, it talked about how Jeroboam handed, handed things over to Nadab. Then it seemed to skip anything about Nadab, went straight to Rehoboam. Then after Rehoboam, went straight to Abijah. Then after Abijah, went straight to Asa. And now it mentioned... Uh, the Asia. Uh, well, it mentioned uh, Jehoshaphat, right? Okay. Then after that, it goes back to Nadab, right? So we're about to read about Nadab right now. But remember, we already learned about Baasha only because the book was telling us about Asa. So in Asa's life, he was up against Baasha. This is kind of like the timeline. So everything happened right here is happening at the same time. But you see Nadab is, is way back here. And we're going we gonna to kind of read about what, what Nadab did. So let's, let's, let's take a look at it. Well, uh, what verse are we on? Uh, 25. This is what, chapter 15? Yep. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 25. Watch what the book says. And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. Right? So way in the beginning of Asa, king of Judah. So you see how this is aligned at the beginning of Asa? This is when Nadab came. So look how short this, this, little, this little block is for Nadab. Couldn't even fit his name in there. Just had to give him a little arrow. Right? Because that's how short his time was. Why would his time be short? Who's, who, who's his daddy? Who's Nadab's daddy? Jeroboam. Jeroboam, right? Right? The one, the name that come right before him is his, his daddy. Jeroboam. Right? So Jeroboam was the one that got that prophecy against him that I'm going to kill your entire family. That's what the most high God said. Everybody in your family going to have to die. Right? So Jeroboam, Jeroboam died, but that prophecy still got to be fulfilled. Everybody in his family got to die. So after Jeroboam died, Nadab becomes king. Let's see what's about to happen to him and what causes it to be so short. And he reigned over Israel for two years. Uh huh. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father. Mm -hmm. And in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. And Baasha, the son of Ahijah of the house of Issachar, conspired against him. And Baasha smote him at Gibeathon, right. which belonged to the Philistines. Uh huh. For Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibeathon. Right. So Gibeathon is somewhere where Baasha. So we already learned about Baasha a little bit when we had learned about King Asa and Judah. Right. So you look at Baasha here. Right. We was talking about King Asa. It told us about Baasha was beefing with King Asa. They was, they was at war. Right. So we learned a little bit about him. Now we get to find out how he came in to be king. He 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 went ahead and knocked Nadab off. So Baasha saw Nadab and when, when Nadab was king, his dad and Nadab was going to war in the city that Baasha came up in. So now Baasha, he, he old. He looking like, oh, y'all got me messed up now. He got him a crew, and he went at the king, and he killed the king. And by doing that, he takes the kingdom. So now Baasha is now the king, right? So that's why, if we go to the other slide, That's why it looks this way, right? So it goes, it's handed down to Nadab because that's his son. He got the little line here. But now it goes to the side because Baasha took that boy, right? So let's keep looking at it. Even in the third year of 
Asa, king of Judah, Baasha killed and, and slain Nadab and reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass. When they say reigned in his stead, that just means he became ki king, king in instead of, of uh, the previous king. Right? He replaced him. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And it came to pass when he reigned that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. Mm -hmm. He left not to Jeroboam any that breathed until he had destroyed him according unto the saying of the Lord which he spoke by his servant Ahiah the Shilonite. Right? So you see that? He killed everybody in Jeroboam family just like the book said was going to happen. Right? That had to happen. So Baasha is the one that did it. Why would he kill everybody in his family? So, Why would Baasha do it? We know, we know that the book prophesied it. We know the most high God said it was going to happen. But why? I don't think Baasha in his mind was saying, let me fulfill the word of God, right? Why would Baasha do it just for himself? Why would he want to kill all his family members? So he wouldn't have a son come up to try to be king. You mess around and have a son and I leave him and I spare him. Guess what he going to say? I'm the rightful king of Israel. You kill them all? I ain't got to worry about that. Right? So now Baasha is king. Let's keep reading. Because of the sins of Jeroboam which he sinned, in which he made Israel to sin by his provocation, wherewith he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. And there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. Right? So we kind of heard a little bit about this already, but let's see. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, began Baasha, the son of Ahijah, to reign over Israel in Tirzah, mm -hmm. twenty and four years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. Mm -hmm. So Baasha, he did the same stuff that Jeroboam did, essentially. Right? Remember, Jeroboam, what was his big thing? What did he do wrong? Y'all remember? What did Jeroboam do? Y'all remember Jeroboam? He set up, he created his own holidays. You know what I'm saying? He set up the golden calves. They wouldn't have to go to Jerusalem. What happened? Yeah, kind of, yeah. He set up a place in Bethel anybody, and a place in Dan. He made anybody priests. He made anybody a priest. Who was supposed to be the priest? The Levites, but who specifically are the Levites? The sons of Aaron, right? Sons of Aaron were supposed to be priests. But nah, Jeroboam was like, man, anybody could be a priest. Book said he made anybody a priest. Anybody who got a, it's like, yeah, you can be a priest too. Right? They made it, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like now, nah, anybody could be a pastor. You know what I'm saying? Anybody could be a darn deacon. You ain't got to have no standard. You ain't got to, you ain't got to hold no rule. You ain't got to have no, you know what I'm saying, respectability, no reputation. Just anybody just get up and you start teaching about God. Right? Just make a mess. Right? So that's what we look at here. Baasha, he he kept that same thing going. So the Most High God is like, man, I'm not pleased with you either. But let's see, let's keep going. And the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha, saying, "For as much as I exalted you out of the dust and made you prince over my people Israel, mm -hmm. and you have walked in the way of Jeroboam and have made my people Israel to sin to provoke mm -hmm. me to anger with their sins. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will take away the pros the posterity of Baasha and the posterity of his house." And will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Him that dies of Baasha in the city shall the dogs eat. And him that dies of his in the field shall the birds of the air eat. Now the rest of the acts of Baasha and what he did and his might, are they not written in the books of the chronicles of the king of, kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. And Baasha slept with his fathers and was buried in Tirzah. And Elah, his son, reigned in his stead. So now Baasha dies. Right? So Baasha dies. And Baasha passes it down to his son. His son's name? Aaliyah. I mean, Elah. Right? So he gets to pass it down to his son. He didn't get it from his daddy, though. He stole the kingdom. He dies. The most high God tell him, look, the same way I did Jeroboam is exactly how I'm going to do you. So now look. Look how short his son have it. Just like Nadab, right? Because as soon as he die, most high God is like, yep, I'm about to take your whole family out. Right? So now most I God said about him, anybody who died, I think he said you die in the city, you get eaten by the dogs, you die in the field, you get eaten by the uh, birds. Yeah. Right? So that's the prophecy that's against it. Let's see. Azariah, be careful for me driving this around. You're going to hit the camera. Alright, so now let's take a look and let's keep going. Azariah, sit down.
Mm. Now the rest, wait a minute. And also by the hand of the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani, came the word of the Lord against Baasha and against his house, mm -hmm. even for all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord and provoking him to anger with the works of his hands mm -hmm. and being like the house of Jeroboam and because he killed him. In the 20 and 6th year of Asa, king of Judah, began Elah, the son of Baasha, to reign over Israel in Tirzah two years. And mm -hmm. his servant Zimri, captain of his chariots, conspired against him, and he was in Tirzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Tirzah. So look, Elah, he got the throne. He only had it for a good two years. So you know what I'm saying? It's stressful up there. You know what he did? Let me go get me a drink. So he started getting drunk. You know what I'm saying? The captain of his chariots, his name was Zimri. You know what it means? You a captain of the chariots? Yeah. So like, and in, in back in our day, back then, that would have been like being in the air force or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So you like, you know, what I'm you a captain of the darn chariots? You know what I'm saying? You had the horse going. You know what I'm saying? But if the horse would like, you know what I'm saying? They got the, you know what I'm saying? You got the, you ever seen? You ever been to the mall and see the and see the see the uh, the mall cops riding on them things? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that, except you got a horse pulling you. You know what I'm saying? You slap him like that, and it, it bring you a little hoverboard and stuff. Get your little hoverboard going. You going like that. You know what I'm saying? You get them boys. You got your little weapon. You swing past them. Shack it. You know what I'm saying? Just chop their whole thing off. You know what I'm saying? Like, shack it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just hold that thing out. Just chop up a whole bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? Just get it. That's how he was. He's a bad boy. That's Zimri. Right? So that's his captain. That's like his man. Ela got to rely on this captain. If it's time to go to war, he's going to say, Captain, what do you think we should do? Right? Zimri the man. Well, let's see what Zimri do when Eli got, when Eli got uh, drunk. And his servant Zimri, captain of half his chariots, conspired against him as he was in Tirzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Tirzah. Mm -hmm. And Zimri went in and smote him and killed him mm -hmm. in the 27th year of Asa, king of Judah. And reigned in his place. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when he began to reign, as soon as he sat on his throne, that he killed all the house of Baasha. He left him not one that pisses against the wall, mm -hmm. neither of his kinsfolk, nor of his friends. He killed everybody, even if you was a friend. Anybody was like, nah, Baasha, no, that was, that was my man. Or that was, you liked him? Yeah, that was my man. Check it! Killed him too. Everybody got to die. Because he's trying to make sure there's no chance of somebody feeling like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, that was ba Baasha was a good king, and his son Elah was a good king. So I feel like it should go to his friend. Like, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? Zimri looking like, no, nah, we, I want the kingdom. Can't nobody else get it. I'm killing everybody. So he killed all his family, his next of kin. That means his cousins and stuff. And he killed his friends. Right? Let's see what happened next. That's the so Zimri. now the king of Israel, the northern kingdom, is who? Zimri. Zimri is the king, right? And Asa is still king in Judah through all of this. All right, so now we looking. This is our time period. We right here, right? Zimri is king. He just killed Elah, right? Asa is still king. He lasts all of this. So now, let's see what happens next. What we got? Oh, we on a, oh. Uh, in the 27th year of Asa, king of Judah, did Zimri reign seven days in Tirzah. Mm -hmm. And the people were encamped against Gibeathon, which belonged to the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And all the people that were encamped heard say, Zimri has conspired and has also slain the king. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, all Israel made Amri, the captain of the host, king over Israel that day in the camp. All right. So now... Zimri took the kingdom, but the people of what land? The people that were in the people of Israel, all oh, Israel. Before that. Oh, Gibeathon. So Gibeathon, they looking like, you remember Gibeathon, right? Who was from Gibeathon? Uh, what's his name? The one before him. Who was Baasha? Ba ba Baasha, yeah. Right? So remember, if you take it back, Jeroboam and Nadab, they used to get a Gibeathon. They used, to, they used to war against their land and take from their land. Because of that, Baasha got up, and he was like, I'm not taking this no more. So he took the kingdom from Nadab, right? Now, Zimri, 
just traded on Bayash's son. It's drama. That's why it's important to pay attention to stuff. Zimri just scammed. What, what y'all call it? What, you know what I'm saying? When somebody do some, some you know what I'm saying? Huh? Hacking. Hacking? What? What do you call it when somebody trade on somebody? Like, you know what I'm saying? When they trick them and then they do some foul stuff to them. Scam. What else y'all call it? <laughs> trick. <laughs> he turned him into an op. Yeah, you turned him into an op. That's how you say it, right? An op? That's what he did. You turned him. No, he turned him into an op. He was the op. He was supposed to be a friend, but then he turned into an op. And then he got him. He killed him. Right? So how do you think the people, then after he killed him, after Zimrod killed him, he killed all of his friends and his family. How do you think the people of Gibeathon feel after that? When they from Gibeathon, that's they, that's they land. Man, we not dealing with this. So you know what they did in response? I mean, Amri, the captain of the host, made the general of the army king. Sister Pam said, "What Bible version is Bro T reading from?" Should be King James. What you saying? Oh yeah, some sometimes like to make it sound more modern. I'd say like the the uh, the synonym of the word because I know like. Well, Disney, you reading exactly how it is. All right. You know what I'm saying? And we'll clean it up later. But you know what I'm saying? Let's read the word exactly how it is. All right. Um. Let's go to, uh, oh no, let's keep going, right? So we, we got Zimri as king right now. The hometown of Baasha is mad at him. So the hometown of Baasha find a man named Amri. This is where it get deep, because this Amri guy, he set off a whole new, you know what I'm saying? He set off a whole new uh, dynasty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His dynasty, his dynasty, Amri dynasty, you see so far, That's Ahab pop. you hand it down one time and it's gone, right? You got Jeroboam, he handed to his son. After that, it's gone. You got Baasha. He handed to his son. After that, it's gone. You got Zimri. It's about to be gone. You got Tibni. It's going to also try to come up. It's about to be gone. And then it's going to be Amri. And Amri is going to hand it down a couple times. And he on, and we're going to see where he take over Judah, too, for a little bit. His family, for a brief little second, going to take over Judah, too. Yeah, he set up Samaria. And, uh, he kind of set up the capital. He can, he's, yeah, he's going to set up a new capital. And it's going to be the capital to stick for a minute. Yeah. Right? So Amri is going to lead a whole new generation. So let's, let's see what happens. The people of Gibeathon set up Amri because they're like, you know what I'm saying? You ain't about to mess with my hometown like that. We don't, play, we don't get down like that around here. I don't know who this, Zim, this, uh, this, uh, this Zimri character is. You know what I'm saying? He just, you know what I'm saying? He just made my boy the op. You know what I'm saying? You know how you say He just made my boy the op. Then he did that. He got him. Then after that, it was like, for sure. Amri. Come straighten all this up. Let's see what Amri do. In the 27th year of Asa, king of Judah, did Amri reign seven days in Tirzah. Mm -hmm. And the people were encamped against Gibeathon, which belonged to the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And the people that were encamped heard say Zimri had conspired and has also slain the king. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, all Israel made Amri the captain of the host king over Israel that day in the camp. Mm -hmm. And Amri went up from Gibeathon and all Israel with him, and they besieged Tirzah. And it came to pass, when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the palace of the king's house and burnt the king's house over him with fire and died. Mm -hmm. For his sins, which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the way of Jeroboam, and in his, and in his sin, which he did to make Israel sin. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and his treason that he had wrought, are they not written in the book of the king, Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. Then were the people of Israel divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Genath, to make him king, and half followed Amri. Right? So after that, it was split because Zimri ruled some of the kingdom, some of the uh, Israelites, and then Amri took over the others. So when Amri went after Zim, uh, Zim, uh, Zimri and he died, after that, some people were like, nah, man, we're we going to ride with Tibni now. So you got all these eyes, you know what I'm saying? So now it's Tibni versus Amni. Um, Amri. Right? Let's see. But the people that followed Amri prevailed against the people that followed Tibni, the son of Gina. Mm -hmm. So Tibni died and Amri reigned. In the 30 and first year of Asa, king of Judah, began Amri to reign over Israel. Mm -hmm. Twelve years. Six years reigned he in Tirzah, and he, and he bought the hill Samaria of Shemer for two talents of silver. 
and built on the hill and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Shemer, mm -hmm. owner of the hill, Samaria. But Amri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. All right, so now everybody else was doing just like Jeroboam. What did it say about Amri, though? He did worse. The book said he did worse than everybody else, right? So Amri took it up a notch. He, he bought a place called Samaria, right? So let's look at the map. <clears throat> now let's look at the map. So if we look at the map, right? Let me look at the map. Let me see here. All right, and go there. This is where he is. All right, so let me take this. Clear all my little eraser marks off. Got pen. We gonna clear off my eraser. Why well, won't clear it off? Oh, it already cleared it. All right, cool. So yeah, we go here. Right, that's where Armrai is. Right here. Right in this area. So he set up his kingdom right there. Once he set up this kingdom, this is a new era, right? It's something brand new that's happening here. And he said he's taking it up a level. He said, oh, yeah, you thought them boys before me was bad? We're going to take it up a notch, right? So let's read about it. Let's read about the type of stuff he was into. But Amri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. Uh -huh. For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin where he made Israel to sin, to provoke uh -huh. the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. That's right. Now the rest of the acts of Amri, which he did, and his might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. So Amri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab, his son, reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began... Ahab, the son of Amri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Amri, reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. And Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, mm -hmm. that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. All right? So now we get into a whole different level. He went to go. He went to go marry a woman up north, right? She was from Sidon. So let's see. You know what I'm saying? She was from Sidon up here, right? He married her, but she served a different god named Baal. So Amri took it up a notch. Then Ab, Ab, uh, Ahab he took it up another notch by marrying this woman and then began to rule his kingdom in the way of Baal. So after a whole nother God, Jeroboam at the very least, what Jeroboam did, Jeroboam said, okay, y'all serve the most high God, but I'm just going to make up some holidays and I'm going to give y'all some idols to serve, but y'all still serving the most high God, right? When Amri got in, he opened up the doors a little bit more. He's like, hey, hey, everybody do what they do what you want to do, right? And then when Ahab, his son got in, he is like, y'all do what y'all want to do, but guess what? I'm about to serve Baal. So that now leads to a lot of the people in our land to start serving this other God. This is a new era here. It's about to be a whole new set of mess that we're about to deal with. I'm talking about it's about to be false prophets, prophets for other gods, everybody arguing and fighting, all that stuff. Right? So if y'all remember way back when, we was talking about Asa. Right, King Asa. So let me go back. And so all of this that we read, Asa is still the king in Judah because they king didn't change. But not yet. Much. You know what I'm saying? Now for Ahab and Ahab, we got we made it to Ahab. So Jehoshaphat is the king now. Is yeah. Well, so Ahab started at the end of Asa. Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about Asa, and y'all remember that Asa, at the end of talking about Asa, it said that he died and he handed it to his son Jehoshaphat. And it didn't tell us nothing about Jehoshaphat. So it stopped right there, right? The book of Kings stopped right here at Jehoshaphat. Yeah, let me put it on the screen for y'all. It stopped right here at Jehoshaphat, right? And then it went back and it picked up from Nadab and caught us all the way up to Ahab, right? So next week when we talk, we're going to start off with Jehoshaphat. We're going to learn a little bit about Jehoshaphat, some of the stuff that he did. Then we're going to learn about Ahab. And these two kings, 
right? The kings before that, it's been war, right? War, constant war. These two kings are going to actually have some interaction, right? Some peaceful interaction that the book is going to tell us about. We're going to see how that goes, and we're going to see what we can learn from it, okay? Any questions? No. <laughs> All right, well, let's pray out.